All right, hey guys. So if you remember from a previous lab, we made a sun sensor using a box and we put a photoresistor on each side of the box, A through D, and we constructed a program that let us take data using an open log, record it to an SD card, and then later we were able to parse through that data and determine the orientation of our box using the the output of the photoresistors. So in this lab we're going to explore a similar idea but using a sun sensor configuration that allows us to get much more accurate and precise data. So because of that we're going to have to change up our design a little bit and I'll show you what that is. Basically our new design is going to consist of many many more photoresistors. We're going to be using a total of 24 instead of 4, and they're going to be mounted in a slightly different configuration. So I'll make a little drawing for you. Uh, pretend this is our array of photoresistors, and we got a bunch of them in a row. Now we're going to have these at the base of a box. So the box will be shaped like that. This is kind of a cutaway section of the box and there will be a little bit of a slit cut into the box right here. Now as sunlight comes through this slit, it's going to keep going and hit one of these photoresistors. Assuming this box is completely closed and there's no light coming through except through the slit, one of these photoresistors will be logging a much higher voltage than the other. So let's say all of these record a zero, maybe this one or this one records some non-zero value, and this one records zero. We can measure the angle that the sun is coming into the box using this data. If we know, number one, the height of the box, and number two, the distance from the center of the box to the photoresistor that has is recording a higher voltage value, let's call this a D, then we can in turn measure this angle theta, which is the same as this angle theta. And if we draw a little vertical line up here, we can measure the angle of incidence right here. Let's call that tau for now. So as you can see, this is a relatively simple design. Uh, it's gonna take many, many, many more photoresistors to construct, but it's gonna be it's gonna give us much more precise data. Now if you think about it, this still only gives us data for one dimension. We're only going to be able to tell this one angle tau for the angle of incidence. Now, in a real world application, we're going to want to know more than that. So, let's think about this box again. I'm going to move this paper down a little bit. Let's think about this box again. Now, let's say we're looking down at it from the top view. Alright? Now, let's say we have, remember this is a slit, and it's this slit is going into the paper. So that no matter what direction the sun comes in at, it's gonna be hitting one of these photoresistors in this array. So this array is perpendicular to the slit. So now let's say, if this is the top view of our box, we can have a slit going this way, and then we can also have a slit going this way. Now what that does is that provides us a measurement in two different axes, in the X and Y axes. So the array of photoresistors inside this box, you can imagine, is going to be going this way underneath and the opposite on the top. They're both going to be perpendicular. So if we construct something like this, we're going to have a relatively large field of view uh, in later on in the video and uh, a part of the attached document in the video description there will be a link to a PDF that gives a very detailed description of how to calculate your field of view um, how to go about calculating the angles of incidences and everything like that and a little bit more specific on how to construct the electronics because the electronics are relatively complex um, as part of the previous lab, we used photoresistors. Uh, now remember, we had to record the voltage from the output of the photoresistor. Now this is going to be a little bit more tricky in this lab because we're going to be using a total of 24 
photoresistors. Now, the Arduino Nano doesn't have that many ports that allows us to read the output from 24 photoresistors. So we're going to have to use something called a MUX. And what the MUX does it is it allows us to listen to more than one photoresistor, essentially, from one port, which makes it very easy. We're going to be using a total of three MUXs um, in our design. Uh, like before, we're going to have to use one resistor for every photoresistor. Uh, specifically, we're going to be using a 1K ohm resistor. So as I said, the electronics are relatively complex for this circuit. Uh, go to the PDF that's linked in the video description. It'll give a more detailed description of both the electronics and the calculations involved for uh, figuring out what your field of view is. All right, so as I said, go to that PDF, give it a look. Uh, next part of this video, we're gonna go over the physical construction for our sensor configuration. All right guys, so we're gonna start going over the construction for our sun sensor configuration. Uh, you'll see here that we constructed ours out of a four by six inch proto board. Now, you can make this using whatever you want, uh, using a proto board or a breadboard or a printed circuit board. Uh, they all have their benefits. They also all have their fallbacks. Um, the great thing about the proto board is that uh, it's a little bit stiffer and easier to work with than a breadboard uh, because we were able to drill through the, the sides of the proto board. Whereas on a breadboard, you might have a, a few more problems with that. We wanted to be able to put headers for all of our components so that we could take them out and exchange them later. You might decide to actually solder in all of your components. It'll probably take a little bit less time. Basic construction of our sun sensor. Uh, we got 12 photoresistors right here. And we have 12 photoresistors right here, uh, Arduino Nano, as well as three MUXs. Now, as we said before, each MUX can support, basically support eight photoresistors. So I have MUX number one here that's supporting eight of the photoresistors on this side, side A. And I have MUX number three supporting eight of the photoresistors on this side, side B. And then MUX number two is doing four from each side. Now each MUX has a analog connection, one analog connection to the Arduino Nano. Uh, it also has three digital connections. Each MUX has three digital connections to the Arduino Nano. Each photoresistor needs to have at least one resistor. We're using 1K resistor, 1K ohm resistors. And so as you might imagine, there are a lot of electrical connections that need to be made for this, for this circuit. Uh, we're not going to go over each one independently. You can look in the attached document that we have in the description of the video for a much more detailed uh, description of what these electrical connections need to look like. As you can imagine, if you did this on a proto board, these connections would be much easier and much quicker because you can just kind of plug and chug with your, with your wires. But as I said, it also might be harder to uh, mount these board spacers, which I'll get to in a second. Um, if you were to do this on a PCB, that would be much easier. Uh, you could make this much more compact and uh, making these connections would just be a matter of drawing them on a uh, PCB design program like Altium. So we go further into our design, you can see that I have these board spacers, one, uh, two on each side, sorry. Uh, what these are for is once we have something that goes on top of our whole package that has the slits carved in them, um, we want to be able to keep those at a very precise height above our photoresistors. It doesn't matter exactly what these height, what this height is as long as you know what it is so you can involve it in your calculations. Uh, we chose to use one and a half inch board spacers. Um, I also cut the leads of the photoresistors so that the total height from the proto board to the top of the photoresistor is as close to half of an inch as I could get. So that means the total height difference between the top of the board spacers and the photoresistors is about one inch. And that's the height that I'm using for all of my measurements. So once you have all these, uh, the headers soldered in and you have all of the components on the headers and you've made all the necessary electrical connections, you move on to the next step, which is building the box around your electronics. So what we did, I'll move this out of the way for a second. Uh, what we did is we built a little box out of wood here 
and glued it all together. Again, you may choose to use a material a little more robust, like you could make this out of aluminum if you wanted to machine it out of aluminum. You could make it out of cord cardboard if you wanted it to be a little more flimsy. Uh, the only thing to watch out for is you want the material on top, you don't want it to have a lot of bumps on it because you want that height above the photoresistor to remain relatively constant. So in this case, we're using wood that's about 0.129 inches, 0.13 thick. Uh, and if I bring our board back in here, you can see that it fits very nicely in between the board spacers and around our electronics. Now, of course, we want walls on all four sides of our electronics that blocks out. So it blocks out any uh, sunlight coming in from the outside. We also want a line down the middle so that sunlight can't cross in between the two, the two compartments here. Now I've labeled this compartment A and compart this one compartment B. So one of them is gonna be taking measurements for one axis and the other one is gonna be taking measurements from the other axis. For the top of our contraption, we also made this out of wood. Uh, we made this out of very thin wood and cut it using a laser cutter. Uh, you, again, you can do this any method you want. The only thing you need to watch out for is the thicker material that you use the wider of a slit you're going to have to cut because this material will have a thickness so when sunlight's coming in at a steep angle you want to make sure that the material itself is not blo blocking uh, the sunlight that's going through the slit. So once you've made this you can see that the slit on this side is perpendicular to the array of photoresistors so that when sunlight comes in like this uh, it's going to vary depending on what angle it is and it's going to hit a certain one of those photoresistors. So it's perpendicular for each side. So once you mount that on top, we have these little screws that screw in directly to the top of our board spacers. And I'm not gonna put all these in, but you see the idea. Uh, you can clamp these down and you'll have minimal entries for sunlight. Uh, also on the side we made a little bit of a hole so that we can access the USB port on the Arduino Nano. You want to make this hole as small as possible just to make sure no sunlight is let in. And if there's a little bit too much space you can always put the cord in and then tape around it so that no sunlight gets in. Alright, uh, so this is the basic construction for your sun sensor configuration. Uh, if you want to see more detailed descriptions, you can look at the document that's uh, linked in the video description. Alright, thanks for listening.